Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming uh, this Friday evening. I really appreciate it because yeah, yeah, it's Friday evening. Uh, today we're going to have four presentations. Do you hear me? Right? Yeah. Today we're going to have four presentations about Magento 2, particular about the migration to Magento 2 from M1 as well as other platforms. And uh, what we are trying to uh, figure out is uh, how, how it can look like and is, is the effort, uh, or the, the, is the business value um, worth the effort needed to, to do the migration. Uh, we will, uh, we're going to have two presentations, then short like 10 minutes break, and then another two ones, and then plenty of time for questions, meeting, uh, networking, and so on. Uh, so I have the first presentation about the, about the migration process. My name is Piotr, I am CTO of Divante. We are a business software house based in Poland, in Wrocław. We have 160 people on board and we are Magento Silver Partner. So what I'm going to uh, speak about is, uh, is how the migration process can look like, how much effort it requires, and w when is the, the best moment to, to do this. Uh, basically, Magento 2 uh, was uh, released as a stable version in November 2015. Uh, but the first voices uh, I've heard about uh, going with migration um, started to be voiced with 2.1. The 2.1 version was uh, it was a huge step uh, with you know uh, fixes for all those chill disease uh, issues like stability issues like like other ones. So yeah, I would say that now is now we have uh, pretty good uh, relays with 2.1 to go with migration is stable and it's, uh, it's just fine. We decided at Divante to go with new implementations only on, on the Magento 2. We are not doing M1 anymore. So <coughs> what's changed with uh, M2? The, there was a you know, kind of a revolution to the platform. They had a huge um, technology depth in Magento 1. Uh, it, it was on the market for eight years. Uh, all the other fr frameworks like Symfony 2 and other platforms uh, at, at some point were, you know, a few years, um, few years uh, before for, for Magento, like they had better architecture using uh, more object-oriented programming principles and so on. So developers at some point um, were, you know, frustrated with it. So Magento had to uh, cross the cross the cross the chasm, cross the gap. Uh, the technological gap. So, new new version of Magento uh, came with a whole new architecture. Like, for example, I will tell you more about architecture on the next slide. But you know, they they implemented like uh, inversion of control principles and changed uh, the modules architecture. Uh, from the business perspective, new version came with new business, uh, sorry, new admin panel with new teams, with full uh, mobile support as well. Uh, but the, the, the bad news is that uh, when you are trying to migrate M1 to M2, it's not as, uh, as simple like running some migration script, but you have to uh, almost rewrite all the customized code, rewrite a uh, whole team you created for the M M1. So the, the good moment to, to, to think about the migration, uh, I would say, is redesign. When you decide to do redesign, you have to rewrite all the front end, no matter what. So uh, the, the ratio of business value and the effort is optimal when, when migrating during the redesign. The effort needed to do migration uh, is linearly dependent on the number of customizations you implemented to, to standard M1, like the number of modules you, you, you used, uh, the, the custom code you write, the, the, the sophistication of the, of the team. <coughs> a few words about uh, the architecture. Uh, I am CTO, so I have to say something <laughs> to developers. Uh, the, the new version is, um, yeah, yeah, is kind of a revolution. Uh, the the main, main changes are like, uh, there is no longer a static mage class, they switch it to an uh, inversion of control um, container, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, the, the architecture of, of the modules of the um, XML files 
uh, is now changed. They changed the ORM uh, layer, like um, querying the database. Um, we have new repositories, entity manager, a lot of cool things uh, implemented. Of course, they, there are some downsides with, uh, with those implementations, and I also will cover this topic uh, later on. From the business perspective, like for business users, uh, the, the, the most visible uh, change is a totally new admin panel, which is now mobile friendly. Uh, it, it has a lot of JavaScript, it's faster, it's uh, more fancy, more easy to use. Uh, also, the structure of the front end changed a lot because now it's not a you know, plain H HTML and CSS files, but rather Mm, whole new JavaScript framework, uh, which, which is responsive, which is uh, reactive, uh, in fact. So it allows you to, to build a pretty cool modern code, uh, which, which cover your technical needs for next few five years, which is pretty important. Okay, <coughs> now a few things about uh, tools that Mag Magento provide to make the migration process uh, more easy. Uh, there are two tools. Uh, first one is Magento Code Migration Tool. Uh, both, both tools, this and the Data Migration Tool, uh, which will be covered on the next slide, are uh, available on the GitHub. The Code Migration Tool uh, is for you know, doing all the um, um, all the things that can be automatized, like. They, uh, this tool can uh, rewrite the XML files, which structure was changing between the versions. It can add, for example, namespaces to the PHP code because now the code is uh, it is using PHP 7 features like namespaces. Uh, it can change the directory structure automatically and um, and modify the code in the in the areas where it uh, where it um, where it it interacts with core Magento, like if you use some mage, uh, mage, static mage calls, it will be changed by this tool, maybe not everywhere, but <laughs> in, uh, in, in much of the places for uh, using dependency injection. Uh, this uh, tool unfortunately doesn't support uh, migrating the teams because the, the changes on the front end are so huge and so, so, so custom that cannot be changed automatically. Uh, and it cannot change any business logic. So if you have your cost custom modules or you are using some third-party extensions, you have to you know, take a look at, uh, at those things. And I, I will tell more on this uh, in the next three slides. Data migration tool is, uh, I would say, more self-sufficient. Self self it, it, uh, it can do more things by, by itself, like, it can uh, migrate automatically products, categories, customers data, uh, core configuration, shipments, credit memos, orders, and you know, all the entities um, you have in the database. But what it cannot uh, migrate automatically are, for example, uh, credential, like API credential, passwords, uh, custom data, I mean uh, cust custom added tables uh, and, and fields to the database as well as it cannot uh, migrate media files and uh, <coughs> custom DB li layout updates. Like you, for example, were using some uh, you know, layout updates, um, saving product entities or catalog entities that are no longer, um, that are no longer uh, there after migration because the, the structure of the blocks of, on, of, of the layout has changed. <coughs> I think that the, the most important slide here is about the migration process and the effort uh, needed to, to, do, to do the migration. Uh, as Magento requires, and I also strongly recommend, it's good to begin with some code audit uh, at first. Because you, you have to, uh, uh, at least you have to uh, check how many, how many modules you have to migrate. Uh, if they have, uh, you know, uh, new versions for M2, or how many custom code you have to migrate to create the backlog for developers. And this backlog is a kind of a foundation for building an estimation of the overall of the overall cost and overall time needed to, to do the whole thing. The good thing is you can use the code, um, code, um, 
code review uh, also to benefit uh, like you can get some security uh, security vulnerabilities uh, found about after after the process and you you can check some uh, performance bottlenecks as well so after doing this audit which takes usually three to five days you you've got the backlog of developers, you can estimate the effort needed to do a migration after that and you have some added value like a list of vulnerabilities, security, uh, security <laughs> fixes to be applied. In the parallel, you can run uh, like, you know, empty uh, version of M2. You can run in some test server and allow your business users to, 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 to get familiar with new admin panel with the features uh, that are standard in Magento because uh, the, 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 the functionality of the Magento itself uh, has been really, really extended with M2, with M21 and with each, each, each new version. So uh, it's a good idea to learn how to use it. Uh, of course, then you can migrate the data using migration tool. Uh, those two steps take like one day. It's easy to, to do this. Um, and then the first step, which is most time consuming, is making the redesign itself, like creating mockups, or maybe you can choose some uh, team ready made for Magento 2. There is a whole lot of, of, of teams already made, so you can use one and simply modify it. <laughs> it takes uh, from two to eight weeks. It of course, depends on, on your front end uh, like, and your interactions on the front end, because if you have a lot of JavaScript, it can take even longer. Uh, then you have to uh, you have to migrate the custom extensions, and of course test stabilizations and, and launching go live. Here is a here is a slide presenting the algorithm for for migrating uh, <laughs> third party features. Uh, I, I copied it out from the slideshow, so here is a link to original source. Uh, the algorithm works like uh, given you have some custom feature you implemented using extension. First, ask yourself if you still need this feature because after a few years of, uh, of using, uh, uh, using store, you probably uh, get used to some features, but some of them are not, uh, not, use, not in use. So maybe it's not needed. If not needed, the answer is very simple. Simply delete the, the, the feature. Uh, if it's still needed, you have to check if it is uh, already included in Magento 2 core. Because a lot of new features, uh, like in, in admin panel, are already there. Like, for example, mass actions, or you know, managing the columns in panel, which were, which were common features that are, were uh, implemented using extensions, now are already there in Magento. So you, 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 can, you, you, you will have them for free. Uh, if the feature is not in Magenta and is still needed, you have to check w w what to do next. And you can uh, do three things. First, you can continue with the vendor, which is the default choice. Uh, like, for example, we are using um, uh, pretty often the module Amasti Promotions. You probably know it. It's pretty cool. And they have version for M2. It, w it, works, uh, it works just fine, so you can use it. If the, um, the, the extension is not available for Magento 2, you have to migrate it by yourself, rewriting the code or writing it you know, from scratch. Or find another vendor with similar extension, of course. <coughs> the migration of custom features, like uh, the ones you, you, you have written by yourself or by, uh, by some IT company for you, is uh, simpler because you have to check if you need this feature, if it's in Magento Core. If not, you have to port the feature by yourself. The porting features uh, sounds pretty uh, 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 scary, but it's, it's not so scary as it looks at, at the first glance because uh, you know probably you will have to change the structure of the code. Uh, you have changed all the um, Magento calls, or change it, for example, to dependency injection. Probably you will have to do uh, some some more uh, research on the database access because it's changed a lot between the versions. 
and then you have to test it and, and stabilize. Uh, the features on the front end are more sophisticated if you used a lot of JavaScript. Now the JavaScript framework in Magento changed a lot, so we have, probably will have spent some time rewriting the front end. Okay, and the main question is, is it worth of it? Uh, I would say that the now in the, or in the next few months, you will have to uh, answer this question because Magento guarantees support for M1 until uh, 2018. So after, after um, some point, there will be no, uh, no security fixes, uh, which is, you know, security fixes are everything for open source software because uh, if the source is uh, published, everybody know how to uh, use the, the, the vulnerabilities in the code. Magento 2 is uh, much more, it can be much more efficient and scalable. Uh, there are a few features like new indexation model, like, you know, the indexation deadlocks and, and problems with indexation algorithms so are a common problem with M M1. In M2 it should be, it should be uh, easier to deal with it. Uh, they implemented Elasticsearch support in 2.1. Full page caching is uh, enabled in, even in uh, community version as well. Uh, and what is also great from the business perspective is that the roadmap for M2 is uh, totally different than, than it was for M1. Like for M1, in each new version you, you've got you know, some minor features and few fixes. <laughs> now with new versions you get really cool stuff like with 2.1 uh, they integrated uh, something called content staging. Uh, in 2.2 there are planned uh, some B2B features as well. Now there was uh, news two weeks ago uh, like Magento bought a uh, Bluefoot CMS and it, should, it somehow w w for sure will be implemented in uh, in next version, so it's also a great idea. And about the effort needed to do the migration, uh, from our experience, as we as we did some 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 projects like that, and Mateusz will uh, t will tell you about one of them. Uh, it it will take about 50 to 80 percent of the budget and time needed for initial implementation, something like that. Um, mostly because you have to rewrite all the, fr the front end. Uh, probably they, they, they are some modules are you using and they should be uh, sh should be ported by developers because no, ver no new <laughs> versions are available. Uh, it, it, this is uh, this is uh, why I recommend doing it uh, with redesign. And uh, Keith will tell you some cool f things about uh, scientific redesign as well. But I would like to show you a few, few slides about one of our cases, redesigning the page and the benefits uh, that, that we, we earn after the, the redesign. It was for Odelo, odelo.com. It's a Switzerland-based fashion, sport fashion uh, retailer. And we started cooperation with those guys last year in January, I think. And they have you know, a few challenges. Like they have problems with stability, the size uh, usually goes down with the traffic peaks. They have problems with performance; it was quite slow, and and they have pretty low conversion rates as, as for the industry. So while we are we were uh, doing some you know things like migration to our servers or SLI services uh, were being implemented. Uh, we also suggested uh, that maybe we will take a look uh, on the front end and try to you know, find out why the conversion is so low. So we started with uh, user experience audit. It's, it's like you know experienced uh, user designer, uh, which is at, at Devante, which is usually a psychologist focused on the client, on the end user. Take a look on each page. Uh, compare the data he gets from you know heuristic <coughs> he is using to, to to score the features on the front end with the data from Google Analytics or other analytical system to find out why the uh, conversion is so low and what we can do to improve it. And he, here are some slides from uh, the, the the report created after the audit. You can see 
uh, you know, the suggestions there with the, with the stars meaning the, the prioritization of the features because we try to pr prioritize priority the set the priorities for, for the each changes to, to achieve the, the, the you know the, the, the most value from uh, from the, the less effort and here are some examples uh, the the worst uh, results the, the, the worst conversion was on the mobile page so we started with it. Uh, we changed our uh, homepage a little bit, changing the slider and exposing more, uh, more categories because uh, it was quite, quite huge and a number of users uh, exiting on the homepage. So the bounce rate was pretty, pretty high because they cannot find, if, if this shop is, is for example, selling uh, bikes, I'm, you know, I, I used Google and find this shop and enter it, and there's no bike here. So <laughs> yeah, it's simple like that, but it, it works. And uh, the, the, the second th the thing we, we uh, redesigned it was a bra finder. Bra finder is for configuring the bras without using this tool. It's almost I impossible to buy a bra on this page. But it uh, simply mm, didn't work on the mobile at all. So we redesigned it, fixes, you know. And the, the most obvious issues you can see on the left version, uh, it's, it's simply simp front and back. And then we uh, go with navigation. Uh, we, we changed our, our information architecture a little bit. And then we went with uh, product with desktop version. The first of all, we changed our product page a little bit because uh, you know it was. Uh, it has an uh, uncommon layout, I would say. Uh, it was uh, pretty hard to guess that the, the, the Add to Cart button is here. If you have lower uh, <coughs> resolution, you can see <laughs> like that. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it was uh, it was not a good idea to have the Cart button so so low in the bottom. So we changed it and we uh, moved the variants to be. Uh, near the price and the, near the add to cart, and we added some recommended products as uh, as well on the bottom. Um, yeah, the 401, the 404 page is my favorite because uh, it seems at, at, at first that it, it makes no sense to you know do something with, with this page because nobody uh, is entering it, uh, but that's not true. Uh, they had some categories uh, within they had prob prob uh, products that were rotating. So for example, they, they were disabled uh, very fast because they had low stocks on them. But they were indexed uh, by Google prior to, to, to the moment they were disabled. And then you know, quite significant, significant number of users got 4 on 4 because they clicked in, in the Google and the products is no longer on the store. So we try to do something to distribute this traffic, this 404 traffic to other sites, like showing the best sellers, showing uh, the products from the category uh, you are probably looking from. And the checkout. Uh, on the left side, you can see the initial version. This was that the checkout was quite narrow. You can imagine how it looks on the iPhone. It was almost impossible to use it um, without, you know, zooming the screen, which is crazy. And uh, we tried to make it more fluid, like uh, more responsive. The result is on the on the right. <coughs> After all of the, all those steps, we also implemented changes using JavaScript and HTML, um, improving uh, the performance of the site as well because we uh, rewrite the, all the JavaScripts. Mm, and we get pretty cool results, like mobile conversion uh, has increased by 102%. Bounce rate uh, has been dropped by 40%. Uh, I think it's because the 404 page. <laughs> uh, and conversion rate um, has risen by 30%. No, the number means that they are doing 37% numbers more from the same traffic numbers that 
they had before. S and so it, you know, it's, it was, it, it, it equals uh, more revenue, so it was really, really worth doing. The last slide is about uh, what you should be careful about uh, using Magento 2. Uh, the, the most, uh, the most important thing is that the, the software itself is uh, being under very active development, I would say. So <laughs> between uh, minor versions like 2.0 and 2.1, there are still some, you know, incompatible, incompa, incom, there is not compatible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they changed like, you know, they uh, introduced something called Entity Manager uh, it's for inter interacting with database. A lot of modules, even in Core Magento, still uh, are using uh, resource models like in M1, but they mark them as deprecated usage. So you have to upgrade it because probably in 2.2 there will, there will be no resource model at all. So it's, uh, I, I'm not sure, but you know, I'm guessing. Uh, but uh, this is very f confusing for developers because there is no one, no single uh, way to do something in Magento 2 right now because you can, for example, interact with database for three different uh, ways and which one is the best. You can track uh, blogs like Alan Storm on Alan Ken's blog to, to find the answer which one is the best because those guys are uh, really close to, to core developers of Magento. Uh, what is also interesting that after the older changes and after the front-end structure changed, uh, we had to change the structure of our teams because uh, we used to have you know, back-end developers and front-end developers, which, which ones were uh, like HTML and CSS guys. And now, to be front-end developer for Magento, you have to know JavaScript GP. You, you have to be JavaScript developer more than HTML guy. So it is, you know, quite of kind of revolution for for the front end guys. Uh, they have had to learn a lot, and the learning curve is pretty pretty steep because if you if you are not uh, you know, if you don't know JavaScript very well, it's it's hard. Uh, and the last last thing is that migrating to to M2, they're doing the, the code audit, trying to estimate the effort prior to doing some development is is really important because there are some modules like you know some payment modules or so, so some shipment modules that were already implemented for M1 and you know doing some um, estimation you probably will uh, estimate it for like two or three hours to simply mm, turn the module on and then you find out that there is no version for M2 so we have to write it from the scratch and it it will take not two hours but rather 100 hours so it's very easy to overrun the budget if you don't plan it well. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. So if, if you would like to have an extended version of this presentation or, or the text description with a lot more details because I was a little bit stressed, <laughs> simply give me your name card or, or send me an email and I will share it with you. Mm -hmm.